You've probably experienced a few bugs when playing different games. Sometimes they can be silly and fun, and other times they can be incredibly frustrating. Over the history of WoW, there have been countless bugs within the game. Some have been cool, like the swifty glowing hands trick in vanilla. Some have been broken, like Stampede in Mists of Pandaria. And some spells like Mind Control seem to have a frustrating bug every single expansion. But Blizzard is a $60 billion small indie company, right? So how is it possible that there can be so many things constantly wrong with the game? Maybe you put on your tinfoil hat and come to the conclusion that a broken game is simply a part of their business model. But more often than not, conspiracies don't paint a complete picture. And the reason there are so many bugs in WoW and problems with PvP have more to do with the structure of the company itself. Maybe being a $60 billion company is part of the reason why some bugs never seem to go away, and why class balance always takes forever. In today's video, we will explain the actual reason why bugs can take so long to fix and why class balance can take even longer. And if you've been wondering these things, then stay tuned because this video is definitely for you. The first step to answer our questions involves looking at the structure of software companies themselves. After all, World of Warcraft is simply just a piece of software running on your PC. Over the past decade, the methods deployed in software project management have evolved, and today most software companies are based on a development strategy called the Agile Workforce. And in the case of software, that means having a division between the engineering side of the company, which ultimately writes the software, and a business side, which is responsible for pretty much everything else in delivering the finished product. Usually projects are divided into small phases, with different types of employees working together to deliver new products, redesign existing features, and of course, fix problems like bugs. All of these things require engineers to work closely with business people. In the vast majority of cases, it is the responsibility of the business side of the company to assign work to the engineering side. It starts by recognizing that engineers are not alone in making fixes. When you submit a bug report, chances are that it isn't going directly to an engineer, but instead it is going to a project manager on the business side of the company. In fact, it's usually not the job of engineers in the first place to find bugs in the game. In most cases, bugs get identified by other groups of people. One of them is you. Yes, right now, you have the never-ending quest of being able to find bugs within the game and then report them in the client itself, or make a forum post on different websites. And now, you can even send a tweet to the Warcraft devs of anything you discover. Some of these reports will be sent to quality assurance employees who will try and replicate any bug before it goes to the next stage of its journey. And at the same time, QA will be finding bugs and problems of their own. It's at this point that we might run into another big problem. It's the fact that bugs need to be reproduced in order to fix. Engineers need to be able to diagnose exactly what causes a bug to happen in the first place, and this requires knowing lots of data on what was happening when it occurred. This problem is the first clue in understanding how some bugs might take a while to fix. Sometimes engineers can't even begin fixing a problem if they can't even reproduce it, and this is what might have happened in the recent race to World First, where Method was able to kill the Jailer after a weird interaction, where Mirrors of Torment was unknowingly causing the boss to do less healing in a late stage of the fight. And while this was a controversial interaction at the time, it continued to be a problem weeks or even months later, likely because reproducing the bug was so challenging. In these cases, everyone knows a bug might exist, but nothing can really be done unless it's obvious what caused it to happen in the first place. Doctors might have a similar experience when trying to accurately diagnose patients. If someone comes in with an unexplained pain, it's up to physicians to make their best guess on what the actual cause was, which can be difficult when there are no clues during the investigation. Engineers need to know as much information as possible to know how to properly fix any issues, which is why GMs and developers might ask you to produce a dump file if you're having problems with your client. At this point though, you might still be asking, okay, but there are bugs that last a really long time, so how is it possible that these bugs take weeks or months to fix? That brings us to the next step in our journey. At this point, we've already established that software companies are divided between an engineering side and the business side, and that bugs are identified by users in QA while trying to get reproduced for engineers who eventually fix it. 
but instead of going directly to engineers themselves, bugs have to be organized. This is where the business side of the company starts taking control. Bug reports from users and QA will all get collected, vetted, and prioritized before getting sent to engineers. In many cases, this literally means putting bug fixes in a vertical list according to urgency, and the order of this list is determined by the business people. If you have a job, chances are you've used project management software, so you probably are familiar with what this might look like. If a bug has a large number of reports and is easily reproducible, it might get put at the top of the list. But if a bug is a much smaller amount of reports and is really difficult to reproduce, it might actually be closer to the bottom of the stack. So when a list of bugs gets sent to engineers, it might simply be the case that the bug you care about is considered low priority according to business people assigning projects to engineers. This problem gets amplified once you realize that this process is not continuous. Usually these stacks of work will get assigned on a weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly period. And if a new bug pops up, and if it is deemed urgent, it might cut the line to the top of the stack. Now, it should be a bit more clear how things might take a really long time to fix. If a bug is complicated, as it often is in the case of complex spells like mind control, business people might give it low priority. If it is too difficult to reproduce, requires layers of fixes, and only affects a small number of people, it can mean that the bug never truly gets prioritized. This problem gets multiplied by the fact that there are multiple products within a company, each with a finite number of resources. In the case of WoW, the game is fractured in a few different ways. Not only is there a release version of Shadowlands, but there is a PTR for the same game, with two versions of Classic, each of which also has a PTR. There are future projects like Dragonflight and Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And finally, there are unannounced projects that we might not even know about. This means that there are nine versions of the same game, each with their own set of bugs. Engineers and business people usually get assigned to specific products within the company, but it's possible that engineers can get loaned from one team to another. And each one of these teams will have its own priority list that gets determined by people making decisions on the business side of the company. And once again, there are multiple things that can add complexity to how quickly a bug can get fixed. That's if it can get fixed at all. What matters a lot is where the bug occurs within the game itself, and specifically what coding languages are needed to fix it. Many parts of the game are written in LUA. This includes obviously things like your UI, which is why add-ons are also written in this language. But LUA might also be used when writing some boss mechanics or spells. And bugs that happen on the LUA level can be easy to fix, since the language itself is designed to be relatively straightforward. Sometimes it's possible to fix bugs at this level without even needing to restart the server. In fact, this often happens during patch release days, or even during the race to world first. If a boss is doing too much damage with a spell, that might require fixing a simple LUA script. And someone like Ian Hazacostas is able to tune these knobs in the middle of an encounter. But WoW is not completely written in one language. In fact, the engine of the game is likely written in C++ or C Sharp, which is a task reserved for experienced senior engineers. If a problem happens at this level, the solution might be incredibly complicated, since both C++ and C Sharp involve compiling multiple layers of code. A bug at this level requires much deeper exploration and much more time to fix. This is why servers sometimes need to be shut down entirely, because engineers are working to fix a key problem within the actual engine of the game. And remember, it is ultimately up to the business side of a company to decide what problems get fixed first. This is perhaps a good explanation for why MC bugs are so frequent. The engineers and the business side might know that a bug with mind control exists, but pinpointing its cause and finding a solution might take a considerable amount of time, since it might be more complicated to fix compared to adjusting a single spell modifier. Before talking about PvP specific bugs, let's recap what we have learned so far. Blizzard, like most software companies, is probably divided between engineers and people making business decisions. Bugs get identified by users and then reproduced by quality assurance, and then business decisions get made as to what bugs take priority before getting sent back to engineers. This pile of work gets attacked from the top, and then reassigned on a bi-weekly schedule. The complexity of each bug and its ability to be reproduced affects where it falls in the order of workflow and how long it takes before a solution can be implemented. And by now, you might have realized one huge problem. PvPers represent a relatively small part of the WoW community, which means there will be fewer bug reports being submitted whenever problems are encountered. And because the community is so small, other areas of the game might have higher priority in the cycle of bug fixing. In any given week, there might be a thousand user submissions to fix a boss that is doing too much damage, and while this is happening, there might be only a few hundred reports related to a bug happening in PvP. 
And if this problem happens to be really complicated, like in the case of mind control, ice wall, or life grip, that can mean having a lower priority in the stack of work getting sent to engineers. This entire cycle that we've been discussing can also help us understand class balance and why it also seems to take forever to get right. Just like bug fixes, balancing is not done in a continuous process. More often than not, it tends to fall within specific development cycles, which can be as short as a week in the case of Tuesday hotfixes, but it can also be a quarterly process, which is why major class tuning typically happens alongside major patch releases. In many ways, class balancing acts as content itself. But generally speaking, newer game features typically take priority on what actually gets developed. Chances are, Dragonflight and Wrath Classic are taking up a lot of resources at Blizzard since they have sharp deadlines due to a public release date. And all the meanwhile, the priority of what gets tuned first might also depend on decisions made by the business side of the company. At this point, it might be unclear if we are defending or attacking Blizzard for all of this happening, but really, we aren't picking a side. After all, Skillcapped is a software company too, and we often find ourselves needing to make our own decisions as to what needs to be prioritized. Are the engineers working at Blizzard entirely incompetent? Not at all. Are the business people being malicious when they are making important decisions? We don't think so. But there's probably room for improvement, especially when it comes to class balance. As the game has evolved, spells have become much more modular. If you search any spell on WoWhead, you can see the various components that go into building its functionality. And now with PvP modifiers, class balance should be easier than ever. And it's obviously frustrating to know that a simple script is what it might take to fix what's broken. When that doesn't happen as quickly as it should, it's understandable why some people might want to send a few angry tweets to the Warcraft devs. So the question becomes, what responsibility do we have as PvPers to make the game better while recognizing that we might be low on the priority list? For one, it means actually reporting bugs as often as possible. The more reports that come in, the more urgent a bug might seem. But this comes with one giant responsibility, and that's to make sure the bug reports contain lots of information. Remember that bugs can only be fixed if they can be reproduced, and angrily posting on the forums or tweeting at the devs isn't really helping the situation at all. Again, we're not trying to be a white knight for Blizzard in this situation, but understanding how any system works can help inform you about what responsibilities you might have. Regardless of how much we might complain about RMP or how many times we get hit by a double chaos bolt, one thing is certain, that we can make the game better. And in some cases, that might mean putting in some extra work. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this video. We hope you learned something useful, so let us know how we did in the comments below. And if you're wanting to gain over 250 rating this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. And be sure to check out our newly updated Discord server. And trust us, you don't want to miss out. We've introduced a new LFG channel where you can connect with players within the community, which includes a new ranking system so you can find partners that are right for you. We also have new class-specific channels where you can theory craft with each other and our team of expert players. And if you want to pitch your ideas for the next Skillcap video, you can do that by submitting content suggestions. Of course, all our website members get access to the premium section of our Discord server, where our team of pro players can answer any PvP-related questions. So what are you waiting for? Join over 13,000 members of the PvP community by clicking the link below. As always though, thanks for watching, see you soon.